It's a great pleasure for me to introduce Sol, who's a kind of academic older brother um, to me. I first met Sol uh, almost 20 years ago uh, at a gathering of students of the lab uh, where I was a student. Um, we are students of the same professor at the University of Tokyo. Um, even then, uh, he was someone to watch. A couple of years prior, he'd been selected for an annual exhibition called SD Review, or SD Review in Japanese, um, which is kind of the equivalent of our kind of Cavalier Bremworth uh, Unbuilt AAA Unbuilt Architecture Awards. Um, but this exhibition uh, had a reputation of picking out uh, young architects who would go on to great things. Some of the, the people who had been in the kind of early versions of that exhibition were then little known figures like Tadao Ando, Shigeru Ban, Kazuyo Sejima, Ryue Nishizawa, so the kind of lineup of uh, Pritzker Prize winners. Um, and Seoul has continued uh, to be someone to watch, um, seemingly uh, on a trajectory to join that kind of illustrious company. Uh, no lesser figure than Toyoito said that Seoul would, and I, and I quote here, cut a swathe through the field of 21st century architecture. So ladies and gentlemen, Seoul Fujimoto. Good, good evening, uh, I'm Su Fujimoto, and uh, thank you very much for coming today. I'm, I'm really impressed by the, the local dance and songs, it's, it's really beautiful, and uh, so that's quite, quite amazing things. And uh, this is the first time for me to be here in New Zealand, so I'm, I arrived today, this morning, so yeah, from the starting point, it's it's really really amazing point, and uh, yeah, I yeah, and thank you very much for inviting me today. Yeah, because the New Zealand and Japan in the map, it's it looks quite close, but uh, it took takes uh, twelve hours, so it is a bit far. So I think it's it's nice nice chance for me to to be here. And uh, yes, so I will talk today about one hour. Could you show the the counter, please, <laughs> so that I could I could uh, pack within one hour. Okay. So the first of all, I like to talk about my background. The, I was born in Hokkaido. Hokkaido is a northern small, not small, but the northern island of Japan. And uh, it is really cold, full of nature. So I was grown up in such a nature field. And then when I come to the university, I moved to Tokyo to come to the University of Tokyo. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it is completely the opposite uh, situation. The Tokyo is you like this really full of artificial things and the ugly and the crowded and uh, something like that. But uh, after spending five, six years, I felt kind of a strange similarity between two of my background, the beautiful nature and the ugly Tokyo situations. Because I thought after learning architecture and thinking about the urban context, I thought the situation in nature it's uh, full of uh, small pieces of the leaves and branches, something is surrounding you to create the cozy skills. But still it's open, so you can walk around any, anywhere in the forest. And in Tokyo, of course, everything is opposite, made by the artificial things. But the similar kind of a small or the same, the variety of the scale things are coming around you to create kind of a cozy scales. And then it's still open, so you can walk around any kinds of uh, small pathways, walk through it, and some something like that. So the appearance is different, the opposite. But the, the experience in the deeper level, it is kind of a, it has a similarity. Then it was nice, surprising things for me. One of my background, the beautiful nature, and another background, the uh, urban, Tokyo urban situations has kind of a the similarity. And then I thought we could have the possibilities to combine them together to create 
some kind of a new living environment. So that was the very, very starting point for my architecture. So in my, I will show several different projects, but the, the, throughout the whole project, you could see such kind of a, the duality of the opposite things, the nature and the architecture things, but not only the nature and the architecture, but the, for example, the, the coexistence of the inside and outside or something between the city and the house, like small architectures, and the smallness and the bigness and furnitures and architectures, such kind of a, the opposite things, opposite concept is coming together to create a new quality. I could describe briefly, that is the, the characters of my architecture. So the first project is the Serpentine Pavilion in London. It was already almost two years ago. Yeah, this is a pavilion in the uh, Serpentine Gallery in Hyde Park, in the Kensington Garden. And uh, yeah, it is surrounded by beautiful, beautiful greens of the park. So we try to create something matching to the natural living environment, natural uh, green environment, at the same time outstanding from that kind of uh, the surroundings. Then we proposed this kind of a like a cloud-like uh, structures, all made by steel, really thin steel bars. It's a two centimeter steel bars. Create the grids of the 35, uh, 40 centimeters, sometimes a double size with the 80 centimeters together to create the whole structures. So this is the site, and you will see the Serpentine Gallery, Contemporary Art Gallery, and then the front court is the, the site. And then, uh, you will see so many uh, white lines. It's, everything is a steel bar. And uh, you will see the grid of the, the 40 centimeters. And then we put some of the steps, uh, the glass, glass surface on the steps. So you could uh, sit on or step on or walk around uh, throughout the pavilions. And sometimes, yeah, on the rooftop, you could, you could sit on, on the glass. So it is like uh, sitting on the cloud or sitting on the, the architectural cloud. I wonder, this, this lighting is too, too bright, maybe? <laughs> is it the, because? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Turn off everything, maybe? <laughs> yes, the process was very, in a sense, funny, exciting things. We only had one month kind of a conceptual phase, and then another month is more like a, the permission design phase, and then the detailed design phase and construction. So it was really quick, and we only had one month, so almost every day we have to communicate with the, the, the Serpentine people. And uh, yeah, it was very rushing, exciting process, and the first sketch I made after one week of the commission send it to them, and then we made uh, the phone, di phone discussion. And they said, after they were seeing my sketch, they said, no, this is not the Serpentine Pavilion. Why? You, yeah, you said, yeah, you can make anything you like, but they said, no. So wh why not? They said, it is too much Fujimoto-like. OK. <laughs> Yeah, you appointed me Fujimoto, I'm Fujimoto, and I made something like Fujimoto, but you don't like Fujimoto-like things. So next week I made another sketch and then send it to them and then make a phone call. And they said, okay, no. Why? This is too much not Fujimoto-like. <laughs> okay, you don't like Fujimoto and you don't like not Fujimoto, so maybe something between Fujimoto and not Fujimoto would be the uh, something like video. And then after that, I made a, another proposal. Of course, that kind of a, how to say, communication and miscommunication, and the shoutings and the fightings and something, it was really exciting. But finally, of course, finally they understood. Yeah, the director, one of the directors, Julia Peyton Jones, she's a very fancy, uh, powerful woman. <laughs> she finally said, hey, okay, I will come to Tokyo next week. And the next week means the New Year's Day. <laughs> so it means we couldn't have any Christmas holidays and New Year holidays. We have to work for her <laughs> for the presentation, but uh, it is very important. So we spent a week to make the fancy model and nice sketches, and then she came. 
the second of the January. And then she saw it, and then she quickly understand what it is, and finally, okay, yeah, let's go for this this direction. That was that was the the final one. And of course, after the the agreement, we have to solve the practical structural things, and uh, of course, cost problems, and uh, the size of the spaces, and the safety and security. Every different kinds of the problems we have to solve. So, even after that, we made the phone conferences every day, and uh, that was very very exciting three or four month. And this was. This is one of the, the sketch model phase, and uh, it, it looks like a, can you see it? Yeah, it looks like a, the waving surface, because at the very, very beginning, I got an idea, because it is surrounded by the beautiful natures, and the program was basically the cafe, but not only the cafe, but the more like a multi-use places. So daily cafe, but in the evening you could have a lectures or parties or dinners or something like that. So it could be more like a multi-use spaces. So I thought about, well, it could be like a landscape-like space where people can choose their functions or choose their places to sit on or to use as amphitheaters or something like that. So I we try to create that kind of artificial landscape by the by the continuous surface. That was a very very starting point. It looks like a bit like a Frangeri, but uh, yeah, we talk about wow, this is like a Frangeri. But uh, anyway, I, I don't care about uh, could be the Frangeri or not. But <laughs> then I thought the surroundings is very beautiful. This surface is very solid, so could block too much the view to the surroundings. So try to find out how we can more melt the beautiful surroundings and this pavilion together. And then one day I got an idea to transform this surface into the grid, to transform the volume of the surface into the grid. So you don't, you will lose the the volumes, but you will just have the frames. And then you could also, you could still walk on it, and you could walk, or you could go down, walk through, or so the space or the place will be kept. But you could keep, or you could find the more view, transparencies or translucencies uh, through the frames. So the combination of the ideas of the frames and the landscape was uh, coming to the final, final ideas. Then this is the, the big model. Uh, 1 to 10 scale, so it is the, the grid size is 4 centimeters, and the, the wooden stick is uh, 2 millimeters, grew together one by one, the finally uh, we made it, because before that we did it by the computers, and of course it's necessary to do the computers, it's too complicated, but finally on the screen of the computers, we don't see the space itself, it's just uh, so many lines, so you, you, we don't see the depth of the spaces, or we don't see the exact shape of the spaces. So finally, we decided to make the physical model. So it, it is the 2.5 meter by 2.5 meter. It's so huge model, and it could be divided in three pieces so that you could look inside of the, the spaces. So that was a tough work, but finally we saw what we have been doing, and it looks almost nice. But after completing this model, we. Uh, how to say, adjusted, or I myself take out one or, two, one or two grids or add one cubes to put it together on it. So repeat in such kind of a uh, adjustment or the development by this physical model. And just quickly after I put or I take it out some of the grids, then my staff follow me and check the position and then transform it into the computer model. So it is a crazy, how to say, communication between the physical model and the computer models uh, to each other. So that was such kind of an analog digital uh, process. And finally, it was, it was done. And the contractor was very nice. It, they were not the architecture contractor. It's more like a, how to say, sculpture or event uh, stands contractor. So they're so precise and uh, uh, to make it. So you could see how the whole shape is really ambiguous. It is very strange because all the structures is made by the straight line. So and the grids 90 degrees. So it's super artificial. Uh, structures, but as a whole impression, 
you could see it as a like a cloud like really soft impression and the shape of the space you couldn't see uh, what it is but you could just feel the atmosphere of the cloud like things and when you are inside yeah here you you could see the remainings of the landscaping uh, surface it is a stepping uh, seating areas going up but then this surface is go continuously go through to the ceilings and then coming back to the to the wall so it is the whole space is continuously waving and some sometimes is creating the stepping areas and sometimes the openings to go out or sometimes these are thicker areas to work as a wall like spaces or shelves for the cafes so every functions every meanings is every time transforming to one specific functions to another specific functions and the transparencies of the the wall actually there is no wall but the transparency of the the surface is continuously changing because of the thickness of the the frames here you will see the transparency because this is thin but then it is getting thicker and thicker then it is more opaque getting more opaque but if you walk around then the thickness from your viewpoint is changing always changing so then the transparencies surrounding you is always changing according to how you walk around and which directions you see it so it is really dynamic experiences no how to say static structures was anymore and uh, all the dynamic experiences is is there so made by steel strong static structures but the whole experience is really soft and dynamic that kind of a contrast or a coexistence of the two opposite things was also created by this and yeah this is the the biggest stepping areas it is like an amphitheater so you could sit anywhere you like or you could just walk up and then have a different viewpoint and then coming down this is inside but i made the big big openings on the top of the the seating areas to make like a more uh inversing feelings of the inside and outside and i we had a actual roof i hope you will see some of the round shape transparent uh discs tiling together to create the transparent roofs it is in the middle of the frame so from outside you don't see it and from inside you don't see it it is in the middle of the the frames but then the contrast of the round shape and uh, the square grids is making uh, another different harmonies and this is the view of the the lecture this opening lectures then you will see the landscape of the the people are created by that and in the evening it is yeah simply light up from the bottom but it is almost losing the materialities the, of course made by the steel but really light floating feelings and the virtual feelings is happening and of course you can come in through this kind of a virtual situations so the real experiences and the real unreal feelings are coming together so i think of course this is like a pavilion really primitive uh situation of architecture but i think this is kind of a showing the essence of my architecture combining the nature things and architecture things together or straightness and softness or the so strong 90 degree i artificial order and the more cloud like soft orders are happening together or furniture like scales and architecture like scales and landscape like scales so such kind of a different phases are melting together in one structural systems and of course transparency translucency and opaqueness and inside and outside that kind of a many different kinds of opposite concept are coming together to create such a dynamic uh changing experiences so in a sense that was a very nice opportunity to to pursue our concept in a really very pure way to make it but even in the real private house is like a practical functional private house we could try to do to pursue such kind of architectural challenges this is a 
real one private house in Tokyo. It's quite small because, you, you know, the plot in Tokyo is quite small. It's almost six meter and uh, seven, eight meter depth. And compared to the size of the car, this is a, you could see how small the plot is. And then the client is a couple, young couple. They don't have a child, so they like to have some, how to say, compact but uh, nice house they can enjoy. We discussed the strategies, and of course we understand the smallness of the plot. So we gave up the size of the house, but we try to create or try to achieve the varieties of the spaces in this small house. So then we divided this small plot in a much smaller, smaller pieces to create these many, many small plates, like a floors, as a floors, and then stuck them up in a various different levels to create sometimes different areas. We, we couldn't say this is a room, but several different areas, 20 more different areas. Some of them has five meter seating height and some of them 80 centimeter seating height. It is not seating anymore. It's like a, like a shelves. But then, finally, if you stack them up, it is like uh, the field for the livings, where you can choose uh, where to sit on, or where to put something, or where to move around, and where to sleep, and something like that. So, and of course, a combination of these small plates, sometimes two plates together to create the benches and the floors, or the shelves, or the tables for some floors and the something like that. So the meanings of the floors is changing according to how, how you see it and how you use it. Yeah, for example, this area, it's almost 80 centimeter high, so it is not a room, but you can just crawl inside of this and sit on to have kind of a, I don't know, small cozy feedings to read some books or just to just to do something and uh, so that kind of a varieties or the varieties of the choice you can have in this house was was a very very uh, interesting point and uh, then here you could see the equality of the furnitures and uh, your daily staffs and uh, your books, the architectures, staircases, window frames, and bookshelves, uh, kitchen elements, every different kinds of your uh, uh, items of your life is now floating, surrounding you to create the cozy feelings. And it is like a, like a Tokyo. Everything is artificial, but the small scale things are surrounding you softly to create the soft territories. And then, the slightly blocking the view to the outside. Of course, it's almost completely transparent, but still, if you are inside, you feel you are surrounded by the many, many things, so you are protected. But still, you could have an openness. So that kind of uh, the ambiguity, the positive ambiguity, is creating this, uh, the quality of the life. And uh, yeah, this guy and this woman is the, the clients. They are kind of, a, how to say, enjoying every day. Yeah, they say every morning this house is very new for them because how to use is not yet fixed. The different from yesterday is okay, or different from uh, the day before yesterday or the day before uh, one year. It's, it's possible. Or different seasons, different climate. How to use all these different plates is different changings. So the area is quite limited. But the way you behave, or way you react, or way you communicate with the space is very various and changing. That is the, the richness, I think, of these spaces. And it is, in a sense, a small artificial uh, forest where you have many, many small things, and you could choose uh, where you like to be, or you could choose where to go, and then still you are slightly protected by the artificial items. So artificial, small, small artificial forest is this house. And then the scale is going up, getting bigger and bigger. Sometimes, yeah, Japanese architects is doing, dealing with a much smaller, smaller scales because, yeah, we have such kind of a traditions. But I'm all also interested in 
expanding the scales with the same or similar ideas. This is a huge project in the Middle East, the invited competitions. Now, finally, the competition itself was gone, so the project itself is stopped. But the, the huge programs of the 1.5 kilometer uh, long of the length of the site to create the really huge shopping areas. So that was a very simple program, so no limitations, no restrictions. So we proposed not only just the horizontal shopping areas, but to create the seven, eight numbers of the towers, huge towers. Of course, one big reason is that as a landmark, but another reason is to create the natural ventilation uh, towers. So inside of this tower is a big void. So the cool air from the bottom is going up like a chimney to going up to the, going out to the top to create the natural ventilation. So it's like this, a huge void areas. And of course, the experience of the shopping is, is nicely articulated by this big void. It's not like uh, the repetition of the five meter span of the uh, things infinitely, but uh, you have the big areas to have a breaks, to have uh, some events. And then again, the small shoppings are surrounding you. And then again, the big areas. So that kind of, a, how to say, articulations or the rhythm of the shoppings are created. And this is the, the diagrams to show the how the natural ventilation is happening. So this is the shape of the void. And the lower part is the shopping areas. And the upper part, we have several different programs, the cultural, some programs. And then the, on the very, very surface, we put like a shading structures. So you will see all the small cells are covering the whole buildings. And the glass is set back from the surface. So all this arch structures is blocking the sunlight nicely to create such a filtering, uh, filtering view of the inside, the, not only the void, but the, all the spaces inside. And the, yeah, this is the arched shape is, of course, coming from this local cultural background. But if you see carefully the whole structures, it is just a grid, the repetition of the grids. It is completely the same as the serpentine grids. There's, in this case, the serpentine has two different grids, small grids and the bigger grids. But then this is a triple size of grids or the four times bigger grids. So much more varieties of the combination is happening. But the, the whole structures, whole geometries is the same, the repetition of the grids. And in the case of the serpentine, it has finally the cloud-like shape, no shape-like shapes. And in this case, it has more like a, how to say, the tower-like shape to uh, more satisfy the functional or the ecological sustainable requirements. But the whole system is the same, but only the scale is expanding. Then, of course, I didn't expect when I did the serpentine pavilion, and I didn't expect that grid could be expanded to such a huge scale so over the 1.5 kilometer structures. But uh, then when we started this project, the site is huge, crazy, and the strong sunlight, nice to block the sunlight by the structural frames. And then we got an idea to expand the grids. Then it somehow, it, in a sense, it's a very crazy ideas, but in a sense, it's Nice to see that new potentials are open for us from the, such a small, tiny, delicate grids into the really dynamic uh, structures. And inside is like this. So you will see how, and of course, not only the grids, but the, we combine with the circle shape or arched shape, then the filtering effect is much more complicated than the usual grids. So it is really, really amazing, uh, huge structures. And sometimes some of the tower has uh, just water on the bottom and the, I don't know, the small shapes is going through. So that kind of a, a bit crazy uh, imaginations is possible, we thought, in the Middle East, or everything is possible in the Middle East, we thought. So we proposed this. And then, yeah, this is the view evening view, it's really 
how to say, yeah, from this distance, it is somehow the similar, getting similar to the serpentine delicate uh, repetition of the grids. And uh, yeah, of course, as I said, finally, everything stopped. So we, uh, we thought everything is possible. And uh, yeah, the stopping such a huge competition is also possible. So we just accepted it. And we just thought, wow, that was kind of a strange experience, suddenly involved into the huge development project and then expanding our ideas. But finally, everything is gone. It was nice experience. But of course, I still like these ideas. And on every lecture, I'm showing this project and tell, talk about, yeah, let's make this project. If you have some money, <laughs> please join us to, to create this crazy project. Of course, we can modify the shape of the arch from the Middle East to the, some other, how to say, I don't know, the local icons or something like that. It's really flexible. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm enjoying doing small things, middle things, huge things, private residence, cultural things, and shopping things. That kind of a variety is quite exciting because small things inspire sometimes bigger things, and the big things inspire new ideas for the small things, or different programs inspire to each other. But I think this is one of the most smallest and the most fundamental programs I did. This is a public toilet in nature. It's a really quite small one, only one public toilet. <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see toilet in the glass box and the uh, wall. So that's it. Now, this is a, uh, you will see clearly more toilet, glass box, and the, the wall uh, surrounding. Because I thought the public toilet, it, of course it f sounds funny, but the public toilet is one of the very, very important program for architects, I thought, because it's of course public, so everybody can come in, but it's really private. Once you come in, it's really private. So nice coexistence of the publicness and the privateness. So how to deal with such a opposite things was a big challenge. And our side was in the, the countryside, in the nature. So how to do with, yeah, in the nature, so you can have a, a nice view, open view, but you have to close any, anyway. So how to deal with openness and closeness. That was also really fundamental aspects of architecture. And of course, it is really surrounded by nature. The architecture is, of course, architecture, artificial things. And then the behaviors is really, really fundamental, natural behaviors <laughs> inside. <laughs> uh, yes, finally, we, we designed this. This is a wall, and this has a door, and you can lock it. So once you come inside, you can lock, then the whole private, uh, inside of the wall is a private garden like things. Then you could do toilet or here or there or <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> the height of the wall is a 2.2 meter. So of course, if you jump, you can see it. But uh, anyway, it's uh, kind of a calmly blocking the view from the surroundings. So the strategy is very, very simple. Usually the wall has several different meanings. Sometimes it's blocking the view is one of the purpose or function of the wall. And sometimes the block the air from inside and outside is another very big function of the wall. So in this case, we just divide that kind of a combined meanings of the walls to separate in two pieces. The one wall is just block the view. But the air itself is, how to say, continuous. Inside and outside is continuous, just to block the view. And this another wall is to block the air, inside and outside, but to not block the view. So just clearly divide the two functional, dif different functional things. And then to make a distance from this wall and that wall. Then something 
strange, something new could happen. You could enjoy the view from the toilet, you could enjoy the openness, but still it is really, really protected. And it is kind of a strange between public and private situations. So the shifting the boundaries or blurring the boundaries between the public and the private or between the inside and outside. So that was a very simple uh, strategies of this toilet. So this is the plan. Wall, entrance, and the glass box. It is about 20 meter something. So yeah, if you open the door, close the door, then you could enjoy the whole openness. And we keep the natural uh, garden, natural uh, situations. We kept the trees, we kept the, the grass. So it is really just a, like an open field. And of course, if you are really emergency situations, it's a bit tough toilet because once you open the door, then you will see 20 meter more to run, to rush. <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, it's, for now, it, it, of course, it works. And this is like this. And uh, the budget was a bit tight, so we made the wall by just a, like a pile sticking into the ground and just connect it on the top. So it is really primitive way to make the, the wall. And this is the entrance. Lock the door. And you will see the neighbor's house a bit, uh, but uh, yeah, we carefully designed the height of the wall. So if you standing here, you will see it. But if you sit here, you don't you don't see it. They don't see it. So it's it's no problem. It's a perfectly carefully designed height. So you will see how yeah we keep the trees and we keep the green grass. It is not super nicely designed uh, landscape garden. It's more like uh, we just make, try to make it really natural. So that the, how to say, kind of a creating the just a open to the field uh, feelings. And this public toilet is, of course, this is a permanent public toilet, but uh, it is part of the plan to promote this small city in Japan as um, city of art. So it is, of course, not art, it is a toilet, but uh, they inviting many artists and designers and architects to create some small installations or small uh, this public project or renovating the art museum, something like that. The, so whole, the whole city has been doing that kind of things. And then this uh, last spring, they did kind of the art event for about two, three months. So many, many people is coming and then visiting here or there or traveling by car to, to visit in these kind of uh, small installations. And then this toilet was getting very, very famous because of these kind of uh, crazy ideas. So they got a big bus with uh, 40 people or something coming, not only one bus, but the two bus and three buses parking there. And then just to come inside, to sit there to take a photos, <laughs> one by one. So they take a, made a long line to take a photo one by one. So it is like a kind of a strange destination for the, the tourist. And then the city government found out one problem because there are so many visitors and this is a toilet. So there are some of them are expecting to do the toilet. But then so many people just come here to take a photo so they, they, don't do, they couldn't do the toilet things. But 100 and 200 people is coming, coming. A lot of people is crowded. So finally, city government decided to put kind of a temporary movable portable toilet behind this wall. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, the I think, the first toilet with a toilet. <laughs> So yeah, it was really funny things, but uh, it's nice to have such a many, many visitors. And it is still on. So if you are interested in, when you come to Japan, you can just drive a car from Tokyo about one hour, and then just to come here to do the, do the toilet. <laughs> anyway, but I think it's very interesting topics. We 
we did in this toilet was how to deal with inside and outside. It is really fundamental topics of architecture. And uh, this private house, it was a bit the older project, but also dealing with how to blur, how to make the boundaries ambiguous, blurring between inside and outside. This is a one private house for a couple, rather elderly couple, and the house is very simple, made by three boxes, the big box, the middle box, and small box. And all the box has many, many, many openings, but uh, the strange point is this opening, these openings on the big box has no glass. So the rain comes in through and the wind come through the, this big, big box. So inside of this big box, this area is outside. It's like a garden, outside garden. And then the middle box, it has a glass roof and the skylights and the windows. So inside of this middle box is inside, actually inside, but still outside of this small box. So if you have three boxes, box in box in box, then in definition of the inside and outside is always blurring. Inside of this big box is outside, or outside of this big box, middle box is still inside of the big box. Inside of this middle box is outside of this small box. So inside and outside is always blurring. But still, we have to make definite line of the inside and outside because it is architecture. So architecture should make strong boundary, but your life, our life, sometimes don't care about where is inside and where is outside. Getting more and more outside, but like to be more protected or coming inside, but still like a in between things to enjoy the nice weather or some more like a communication to the surroundings or something like that. So I try to create that kind of a nice blaring experiences which creates the varieties because this is like a gradation. It's usually inside and outside just divided by the wall. So you could choose inside or outside. But if you have such kind of a layers then it is getting more like a, you have more options in your life to choose, to choose such kind of in-between spaces. If the weather is fine, then getting more and more going inside, but still slightly boundaries, within the boundaries of your house. Or uh, the weather is, or depending, not only depending on the weather, but the, your feelings, or how many friends you have in your house, or something like that. If you like to be more protected, then you could come inside, more and more inside. And if you like to open, then you could be more and more open. So you could open the choice for your life. So the whole house is like this. This is a big box, but it has many openings, but without any glass. And then from the street, it's a it's big box. It's about 7.5 meter high but it has really huge openings. Some of them two by three or something like that. It's huge openings without glass. And then once you step inside of the big box, it is like in the middle of the trees, but still covered by the shelters. So it is always shifting or blurring the feelings of the inside territory or outside of your territories. And from the very, very inside, you will see how this is a small box and middle box and big box with many, many openings. So how the layering of these openings is creating such kind of a, how to say, scattered uh, feelings of the sky. So it's to open to the sky really, really completely. So you will see 10 small skies or 20 more skies surrounding you, but still you are in the middle of the three layers of the concrete boxes. So well, well, well protected. So here you have well-protected feelings and well-open feelings together. And it is like a field of the transparency and the opaqueness and the gradations between the two of them. So it is that kind of a gradation feelings is one of the key concepts of this house. And maybe it could be the key of the future architecture, I think, because it has the in-between feelings, inside and outside, openness and closeness, and you could have more choice in your life. And then again, this is the garden, like a yeah, real outside garden, but protect, protected by the big box, and with trees, 
the seven meter trees, now it's growing more and more with the openings. Now, of course, the position of the openings are carefully designed to block the, some of the, the view and then still enjoy the upper part of the house or the greens of the neighbors take into your life. So the boundaries of your site plot or boundaries of your house is like expanding and shrinking according to your feelings. So that is the, the amazing point. And the, this private house and the toilet has a similar strategies to make the multiple layers of the walls and boundaries to create such kind of a in-betweenness to have more, how to say, rich experiences between that. So I have three more projects. Sorry, I talk too much, but uh, I, will, I will rush, I will rush. This is a library, and it is also dealing with the boundaries, blurring boundaries. But this, in this case, it is not only inside and outside, but between inside and inside is also could have the nice blurring boundaries. This is a library made by the bookshelf. So all the wall are covered by the bookshelf like this. And uh, the sk skylights is covering you. So it's like an open field the articulated by the bookshelves. The basic idea was very simple. The library is the space of the book. So we started from the bookshelves. It's growing to create the areas for the people. And finally, it is getting really huge spiral of the bookshelves. But these spiral walls, bookshelf wall has many openings, like uh, the previous uh, residential project. And the layering of these openings is creating the depth of the spaces. So you could have an, uh, kind of uh, invitations of the feelings, something happening behind the wall or behind behind the walls. So you start to walk around. You are so interested in the feelings behind the walls through the openings. Most of them are hidden, but the small openings is creating the curiosities for people. So that was the, the point. And then this is the, the spiral shapes. So I thought about, of course, the experience in the library is functionally, it is big purpose is to find books. It's also very, of course, very important. But the, another really fundamental experience in the library is to walking around in the libraries for no purpose, like a walking around in the forest. So you encounter unexpectedly something really surprising or you encounter, you will find some new spaces, hidden spaces behind the walls or something like that. Such kind of exploring experiences is also quite fundamental, I thought. So try to create like a forest of the books by artificial geometries and artificial materials. So that is, the how to say strategy to create many layers of the walls with many many openings to make the spaces between the transparencies and opaqueness so finally the even the wall outside is covered by the the bookshelves and if you come in you will see these layers with openings and another layers of the openings and another layers of the openings and if you go up which is the main floor as is upper level with the skylights softened by the plastic materials. It's like a cloud and uh, to make a uh, nice reflections so that the ceiling is almost like a, like a vanishing into the, into the sky. And this is the main area. So you will see how the spiral shape is vanishing into the uh, hidden, hidden areas or uh, the layering spaces through the openings. It's creating the, how to say, infinite emergency of the curiosity is, is happening. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, after exploring the forest, get tired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like this photo very much because it is showing how comfortable this space is. Yeah, but actually, seriously, this is showing the magic of the scale. Between these both walls, it's usually like a more cozy, smaller scales. It's about, about 4.5 meters, something like that. So it's more like a residential scales. Because layering of this uh, book, bookshelves 
everywhere you could have such kind of a cozy areas. But at the same time, if you're standing in the middle of this spiral, then you will see how spreading, vast spreading areas are surrounding you, almost infinite feelings is spreading. It's about thousands and thousands of square meters. So between these kind of a cozy residential or uh, domestic scales and these huge thousands of, the thousands of square meters spreading scales are coexisting together in this spiral space systems. That is very, very important point because the library requires both of them to read the books or to sleep in the libraries in a really cozy scales. But on the other hand, you like to walk around in the endless feelings of the forest of the books. So try to create the range of the scales from the small scales, the middle scales, the bigger scales, and infinite scales by the simple systems of the spiraling uh, walls. So that was the very, very point of this, uh, of this project. And then in the evening, the inside is getting more and more coming out. Okay, so two more projects. Both of them, uh, last year the, we won a competition, two, uh, we won a competition in Europe. So one of them in France, the residential tower in south of France. So this is the, the residential tower in the city of Montpellier. <coughs> Montpellier is the, one of the Mediterranean city and it has a <clears throat> beautiful old city area, and then the new area is expanding, inviting many uh, architects. So they are pushing the new city as new architecture things to create the quality of their life. And we are invited to the competitions. And finally, we did a research about their life and the Mediterranean life. So even the winter time, they go out to the terrace to have a lunch or to go to use the open air terraces, open air cafes for their daily life. So we thought, wow, this is anyway their daily life and their, their, their climate. So how we can translate their historic or their usual life into the contemporary architecture? The idea was very simple, to create, even in a high rise building, to create a huge layers of the terraces, open terraces. So this is 55 meter high, so 17 story high, but even in such a high rise building, we could make the cantilever terraces sticking out. And not only one terrace from one apartment, but uh, two, three, or four terraces sticking out from one apartment to create the huge, like, uh, how to say, I don't know, kind of a strange appearances. It's not like a box of architecture, but it's more like a, the natural environment. We called it like a tree of an apartment, the white tree, but uh, some people say it's like more like a pine cone or pineapples or something like that. But it's, it's more like a organic, organic feelings. And from above, yeah, it is like this. Many, many uh, terraces, some of them the shadings, they're facing to the river, and the, this is the site. So the whole shape of the building is like this. It's a bit strange because we had the existing green belt alongside the river and another existing green belt. So this is our site. So we just follow or make it continue to the existing uh, green belt. So we keep the open areas on the river side. Now we have the existing building here, so try to keep as much view as possible, so to push this surface a little bit set back. Then finally, the whole shape is like this organic. So mixture of this shape and the sticking out balconies is make the whole impression like a more organic, not like a building with a balconies. So I think in a sense, the apartment with a balcony is a really old or traditional typologies, but if you do it more extremely, and if you carefully see the surrounding conditions, then the whole result is getting something based on really the usual 
strategies, usual typology of the balcony and apartment, but jumping out into the some new understanding of the typologies. So that is why I, I, I like it very much. It's not just a something new, but based on our daily or their daily life, lifestyle and climate, but still it is something new. So it is here, you will see how one apartment has different balconies, and some of them has the multiple layers of the, the vertically connected balconies. So it is, yeah, go out here and then coming down, and then this is a duplex, for example, or big, big balconies, or something like that. And from the balcony, you will see the Mediterranean Sea on the south directions and uh, the mountains to the north direction. So it is really the beautiful uh, view surroundings. And the e evening, yeah, it is light up. So it is, of course, the architecture itself is quite, how to say, unique shape. But uh, our main point was to create the group of their life. I'm expecting many, many parcels or furniture or some other things is coming out onto the balconies according to their life. Then it is just a platform. Our architecture frame is just a platform. And then many, many, many active lifestyles and lives and items and many daily styles is coming out to create their own, how to say, representation of their life. So it is rather high rise buildings, one of the tallest buildings in this town, in this city, but if it is not showing architecture itself, but the showing their life itself, it is kind of a new typologies of the icon of the city, I believe. So now it is, we submitted the permission documents and if everything is going well, this summer we will start, uh, or this winter we will start construction. Okay, so this is the last project. It is the, we won a competition in the Budapest, the, the country of Hungary. The program is the museum of the music, or they say house of music, not only the museum, but the combination of the music museum and performing areas, lecture spaces, libraries, and uh, music practice things, everything together in the middle of the park. So this is the, the aerial view. And the whole park, this is a big, big park. And they had the huge series of the competitions, three, four competitions in one site. And one of them is the House of Music and the Architecture Museum, the Photography Museum, some other museums. So they like to make the whole park as a cultural, cultural space. And we chose this House of Music because it's in the middle of the park, so surrounded by the beautiful, beautiful trees to create. We expected to make kind of inside and outside communications uh, in, the, in the park. So the concept was very simple in a sense. We thought about, yeah, they have the music hall. They have, of course, the big exhibition space, but they said exhibition space should be really kind of a blackout. It's like a black box. So we put it on the underground and we thought about the music space, the performing spaces. And it's in the forest. So if you have the beautiful glass box as a music space, music performing space in the forest, it could be really dreamlike, fantastic spaces, we thought. So that is the starting point. And then, this is a simple diagram. So it's in the forest. So you have a tree, car, tree uh, tops. Then tree tops will be replaced by architectural roof. But the architectural roof has many, many openings to have the sunlight is coming down. So it is like a half architecture and a half forest-like space. And this, under the roof areas, all transparent to have the performing areas and entrance spaces and lecture halls, everything together. So that is the very simple starting point. So this is the site plan. So the plan is really pure circle because it has, it's in the middle of the park, so it has multi access, multi direction accesses from here, here, there. So the circle shape will be uh, perfect for that. And then the roof is waving. It's like a strangely waving to create 
the higher seatings and lower seatings and the welcoming areas and the, something like that. And this waving shape also create the irregular waving seatings to make more acoustically, uh, how to say, nicer effect because it's, it is avoiding the regular uh, surface uh, reflection of the sound. Then, yeah, this is a section. So we have a big areas of the exhibition spaces. And then the whole ground level is like a glass box, performing spaces, entrance spaces. And then the libraries and offices and the, some of the uh, more enclosed programs on the roof. So this is uh, the area under the roof. So some of the, the big canopy is sticking out. So even outside under the canopy could be worked as an outdoor performing areas. And of course inside with the glass is more like a professional performing areas. And this, this bending glass is making the acoustic uh, effect. And this is the lecture hall. Also this is the bended glass. And these, some of the, these patterns is making the acoustically absorbing and the reflecting devices are integrated together. It's not only the classic music, but they like to use it for the more contemporary or, uh, I don't know, rock music or something like that. So daytime, nighttime, it is, could be used. And so these openings, some of them filled with uh, the devices and some of them are open. Now, openable and closable is dealing with uh, such a multi different uses. And then this is, yeah, this is in the middle of the forest. So you don't see exactly the exterior things. You can just feel suddenly or gradually you are under, the, under this area. So it has no facade. It has no exterior uh, shapes. It's just a, like an experience. You are in the forest, and then gradually you are in the some, I don't know, under the spaceship-like things, or artificial under the artificial forest. So that kind of experience is like merging the forest experiences and the architectural roof experiences together to create the like in the middle situations is the, the very, very main point of this project. And they have a snow, so in the winter time, yeah, in, in the winter time it has kind of a all the leaves are falling down, so you will slightly see the silhouette of the roofs. But it is very myster mysterious. You don't see what it is. Just, uh, just like a shaded, nicely shaded areas is happening. So it's just started. We won a competition in the, the last December, the end of December. So we now uh, try to start this project. But uh, yeah, in a sense, this is something new to create that kind of a strong shape. But for us, it is strong shape. But in your experience, there is no shape, no feeling of the shape, just an experience of the suddenly covered by the roofs. And then the light is coming down, just like the conceptual diagram I showed in the forest, people are behaving something in the music like that. So anyway, sorry, it was a bit too long. But I was talking about that kind of a contrast or the imagining the two opposite things or various opposite things, the simplicity, complexity, for example, together, like a serpentine things the, from the very, very starting point. Or the Montpellier housing is also the combination of the traditional apartment things and something new come together. And of course, nature and architecture together. So it is like a frontier for us, for architects, because we know architecture, we know nature, but we don't know what is something between nature and architecture. So that is the trial for our, our architecture field. Thank you very much. Thank you.